If you have your Bibles, take it and open with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11 and verse 22. A very simple, easy, and quick text. If you don't have a Bible or you're driving, <laughs> just listen in. And I promise you that we will quote the scripture very accurately. Mark chapter 11 and the 22nd verse. Very simply, have faith in God. Have faith in God. I want to talk today on a very simple subject, but a subject of profound importance. I want to talk about the object and the objective of our faith. The object and the objective of our faith. In other words, who or what are we to believe in, trust in, and what is the purpose of the faith? We need to begin to get back to basics when it comes to the things of God. And by basics, it's an acronym. Bible answers so I can survive. Bible answers so I can survive. We need to get beyond the advanced and, and go in deep. We need to get back to the basics. And what are the basics of Christianity? The ABCs of the faith, the altar, the blood, and the cross. Amen. The Bible, the book, and the blood. These are the basics of Christianity. We, we, we don't need to get out there in Star Trek land or into to a, a, a land where uh, no one has gone before. We, we need to go to the foundation of the fundamentals of the faith of Jesus Christ that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, Jesus baptizes in the Holy Ghost, and Jesus is coming again. Now, within the broad parameters of the object and the objective of our faith, we're going to have a AKA or an alternate title. And I like this one. I've been preaching this one since I was 20-something years old. And it never gets old. The things of God are new every morning. The Bible says He is good. The, the, the mercy of God, the goodness of God endures forever, and His mercies are new every morning. That's why I wake up between 4 and 5 o'clock every morning shouting the glory of Almighty God, speaking and praying in tongues, sitting at this desk right here, studying the word of Almighty God before I do anything else. I go to God. That's called priorities. It's called putting God first. It's called having faith in God. Now, the second title is very simple, and it's this. Faith's five facets. That's a great little alliteration. I learned that as a Southern Baptist preacher boy kid starting preaching at 16. Have all your points and all your titles starting in the same letter. Faith's five facets. I'm going to teach you something about faith. Jesus looked at the people of his generation and he said, Oh, ye of little faith, why is it that you have no faith? So I say the same thing of my day. So many people are in doubt and unbelief and fear and worry and stress and anxiety. Get into the Word. So I'm going to explain to you today what faith is, how faith comes, how to release your faith, praise God, what is the object of your faith, how faith works and what is the objective of your faith. Faith's five facets. So buckle your spiritual seatbelts, get hooked up with me, and let's get into this. First of all, our main text, have faith in God. That is the only object of your faith. What is an object of faith? An object of faith is something that you put your faith in. See that chair right there? I am going to put my faith that that chair is going to hold me. 180 pounds. I'm going to sit. Ah, it held me. It didn't collapse. Faith is to be placed in one source, and that is Jesus Christ and what he did for you at Calvary. 
As a matter of fact, Paul said to the Corinthians, I don't want to know anything else but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Why? 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the power of God is the cross. The message of the cross is the power of God. That is where we are to put our faith. We're not to put our faith in a man. Amen. I don't care if it's Joe Biden or Donald Trump. You're not to put your faith in a man. You're not to praise and worship a man. I don't care if it's the Pope. I don't care if it's the late Mother Teresa. I, you are not to worship a man or put your faith in a man. Or you're not to put your faith in a religion, in a church, in a cult, in a denomination, God forbid, because those things are sinners and sinful. They will fail. They will fall. They will break your heart. You're not to put your faith, hope, and trust in money. It's here one day, and it's gone the next. It's a false idol. The Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. You're not to put your faith in your works or your efforts. So many religions, oh, if I pray this much, and if I study this much, and if I give this much money, and if I do these good works, and if I do the sacraments, then I'll go to heaven. No, you won't. You're going to split hell wide open. Religion, the doing of religion, the trusting in self, self-righteousness, hypocrisy is the sin you have to repent of to be saved. Are you listening to me? No, that's a wrong object of faith. Self. You're not to believe in yourself. Why? Because there's none good, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You didn't hang and bleed and die on the cross. We're not to put our faith or our trust in our words, in our confession. We're not to have faith in our faith. We're not to have faith in our faith. We're to have faith in one thing. And that is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. We are to have faith in the Word of God. That is to be the object, the singular object of our faith. Amen. The object of our faith. Have faith in God. The Bible said in Proverbs, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Not some of your heart. With all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. It means don't place your faith in your education. In this degree, or I went to Yale, or I went to Harvard, or I went to Georgetown, which is one mile that direction across. That doesn't mean anything. God, God is not impressed by you going to Duke or Stanford or how much money you make. Place your faith not in your education. Place it in the Word of Almighty God. But not only the object of our faith, the objective of our faith. There's a lot of talk today about faith. Joel Osteen, he preaches about Rick Warren. The swaggers. All the preachers over TV, all the megachurch pastors, they talk a lot about faith, but most of them don't tell you what to put your faith in, or they tell you to put your faith in the wrong thing. What is the objective I told you the object. What is the objective of our faith? What is the... Rick Warren writes multi... I think he sold 37 million books. The Purpose Driven Life and the Purpose Driven Church. But what is the purpose or the objective of our faith? Why do we believe in God? Why do we believe in the cross? Is it to get rich? No. Is it to aggrandize ourselves? Is it to become famous or a celebrity or a star? No, God forbid. There is one objective, and it's not to live in a mansion over there in Georgetown or Calorama in Washington, D.C. It is not to become famous. It is not to become mega rich or wealthy. It's not to become a TV star. It's not to become a politician. It's not for self, self-love, self-worth, self-image. All that is garbage. America used to deny self, as Jesus said. And take up the cross. Our problem today is we take too many selfies, click, 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 and we deny the cross. Now that's a good place to say amen. If you can't say amen, you should say oh me, because it's true nonetheless. The objective of our faith is one thing, and Paul said it in Ephesians chapter 1. He said everything that we do in thought, word, and deed should be for one thing, and that is to the praise of the glory of His grace. 
to the praise of the glory of his grace. Listen to me right now. If you've ever listened to a preacher, it's not about your purpose. It's not about your destiny, Rick Warren, Joel Osteen, Donnie Swaggart. It is about his purpose. It is about his destiny. Romans 8, 28. God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, not love self, not love money. Are you listening to me? Not love religion, but those who love God and who are the called according to His purpose. His purpose. For He is foreknowing you. He is predestinating you. He, it's about Him. We need to repent of humanism and get back to holiness. We need to repent of the new age and get back to the New Testament. This is what God is calling us to do. The objective of our faith is not for us to receive the praise and us to receive the worship as a celebrity, as a mega church pastor, as a media church pastor. No, television makes men stars. The truth is, God is the only star. Jesus is the only star of this universe. The glory and the praise and the worship and the devotion and the faith is not to go to a man or to a woman because that is idolatry, imagery, and iconotry. That is likenesses. That is sin to be repented of. The praise must go to one person. His name is Jesus Christ, God the Father and God the Holy Ghost. The, the unholy trinity of man is me, myself, and I. But the holy trinity of God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The objective of our faith, the purpose of everything, is to glorify and to magnify, praise and thank Almighty God that the whole world may know there's a God in Israel. I'm going to stop there for today, and we're going to pick it up in our next message with the five facets of faith. I'll talk to you today about the object and the objective of faith. So next time, we're going to get into the five facets of faith. Father, thank you for these words. I pray for my audience today. God bless them. Bring them to the bleeding side of Calvary. In Jesus' name, this is Pastor Mike. I'll talk to you next time. God bless. Love you.